Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Tong from US, USTC. And it's my great honor to stand here today. And thank you so much for listening even until the last day. So today, I will present our work on how we uh, navigate the latent social interactions between taxi drivers and to further predict their future driving behavior. Actually, it is a joint work with USTC, Baidu, and Rutgers. So I believe it is a it is simple but very interesting work. So today I will mainly focus on our motivation and the basic ideas. And if you are interested in the technical details, you can check my paper. Thank you. So it is outline of my paper, uh, my talk today. And let's start with the introduction. Well, in recent years, uh, we have witness the booming huge cities like uh, Beijing and Shanghai in, in China. And we see that, uh, take, Beijing as, as, uh, <coughs> take Beijing as an example, you can see that in the last 10 years, the population raised almost 50%. We also, for some, even for some, some very old city like the, the New York, uh, there are about uh, 1 million people moved to the Big Apple. So such a huge um, population raised a very significant request for the taxi, taxi service. While unfortunately, unfortunately, at the same time, we realize the amount of cabs keeps almost stable during, during these years. So maybe that's the reason why we need Uber and DD right now. But actually, it is reasonable since usually that if there are more, more taxi, there will be, we have worse, worse, uh, worse traffic since there will be traffic jam. So it teaches us that uh, with only simply increasing the amount of cabs, that could hardly solve the dilemma we face. That means we need more smart taxi, taxi services. Luckily, right now, we are in the era of big data. So thanks to the rapid development of uh, sensor technology or the intelligent mobile device like GPS, FID, and Wi-Fi, now we could collect the real-time record of a trajectory and some other behavioral data. So with this data, we can now design some very, a, a lot of intelligent service to support the, both the cab drivers and the passengers. For example, for the cab drivers, we could, rec we could rec <coughs> recommend the fast routing or the routing that could benefit, ben earn the most to the drivers. While for the passengers, well, we could recommend uh, someone who could share the expen expense and also uh, the, the best location that they could be, they could be picked up. So definitely, this service could provide a better experience of the, the taxi service. However, they still suffer some li limitation. First, generally speaking, that uh, the, the taxi, uh, all the intelligent service of a uh, taxi that is, uh, could be regarded as a recommend recommendation task. So this, all these results are sensitive to the context. For example, here, uh, if you stay in, uh, in a World Trade Center during the 4 o'clock, or if you stay in the Times Square in 7 o'clock, that could be very different recommendation task. So based on this, that's the system should be updated very frequently. That will raise a heavy burden to the system. And also, generally speaking right now, that's uh, the routes designed by the intelligence service. They are almost uh, the, the global recommendation, but not the personalized ones. So if you uh, generally speaking, uh, usually there will be, uh, you design a lot of plans and uh, you have a pool. And for each, each driver, for each cab, you pick up one plan to them. That means that you have to design an uh, extra scheme to distribute this, uh, these plans to keep the regional balance or to avoid that all the, all the drivers gathering in some hot lines. So that will uh, raise uh, the extra burden. And last but not least, all the algorithm, all the intelligent service always try to teach people what to do. But actually, we are human. We could learn when we have the, our own pattern, right? Just like uh, here's a figure I extract from uh, an app designed by Cross One that it shows that uh, a, a day of a taxi driver of New York, New York City. We can see that in this, in this figure, this driver usually walk around, uh, drive around the, the central park. Even every time when he drops off, off someone, he will return to the central park and try to, try to pick up another one. So that means that there is a very significant pattern of this driver that he just drive around the central park. So we can see that the individual factors of taxi drivers function sometimes, especially for New York and some, 
some other big city in China, since in these cities, the drivers not follow the orders of the, of the telephone or online ordering uh, appointment, but they just uh, drive around the city, and if someone shakes their hands, they will pick, up, pick them up. So this, in these cases, that's the individual factors will not only determine where they go, but also determine the, the effectiveness of their taxi service. So here we already know that some drivers could uh, summarize their, their driving experience and have their own patterns, especially for the experienced ones. But how about these new, new drivers? How about these inexperienced ones? That they, are even, they are even unfamiliar with the city. So how could they perform better? Well, luckily that right now we have so many channels for them to communicate. For example, in the, in the real world, in the physical world, you can meet with the, the with the top, top drivers when you are uh, refueling or having lunch together. Well, you can also learn from them during the online channels, for example, the, the online BBS or Twitter or something like that. While during all these uh, interactions, you can learn from them you, that there, will be, influence, uh, there will, be, will be information spread during them. So here's a motivating example. Sorry. I'm not sure if you can clearly see it. I can explain. Well, it is a post of the New York City uh, taxi cabs, a ta ta taxi for all. Uh, there's a new driver who moved to New York, and he asked someone if they could share their, their experience or idea to how to uh, improve the benefits. And also, there's uh, s some guy uh, teach, them, teach him some very detailed rule. For example, uh, he, he just said that uh, if you uh, drive to the, the, to the World Trade Center railway station, and there will be a lot of, guys, lot of guys who travel from this, this station to the, to the World Street. So if you stay there and waiting for them, that you will get, you will get more tips. And also, it, he told him that uh, in the midnight, you should avoid to pick up guys uh, around the bar, since they, they, are, uh, they usually get, your, get their cabs very dirty. So I think that with these very detailed rules, the new drivers could learn from this and could definitely improve their benefits. So I think that it is a very motivating example to show that during the interactions, uh, the, the new drivers could, could earn some, some knowledge, and this knowledge will be transferred to their driving behavior. Just like this, here the, the driver W holds a very significant pattern in the color blue, and he teach driver V. So in, you can see the driver V, the, the blue pattern race a lot, and in the next period, W and V try both to influence the driver U. So the driver U have an even more significant pattern blue. So that's very interesting that this pro process is quite similar with uh, social influence. So with this assumption, now we tend to formulate this problem and propose our framework. We first uh, give a target group of taxi drivers, and for each driver, we have the corresponding uh, behavior pattern uh, during each time period. And actually, we have two tasks to, to be solved in this, in, in this problem. First, we have to review their latent social in connection or social interactions. And we have to estimate how strong the social influence could be. And secondly, with the social influence, we should try to predict their future behavior. So here I'll give you some preliminary of our framework. First, uh, for each driver, we have a S presents their driving behavior pattern vectors. And also, correspondingly, we have a P presents uh, their social influence. While also to describe the, the behavior chain, we have two sets. Um, for each pattern, if its ratio of it, if its frequency could be increasing in the next period, we treat them as a set of R, and also for this decreasing one, we treat them as a, as a set of D. And with this preliminary, now we try to connect the social influence and the driving behaviors. We assume that, very, very intuitively, we assume that if uh, some pattern is increasing in the next period, then a corresponding inf social influence on them should be stronger than those on the decreasing ones. So here we have a pattern ranking relationship as this. And here, to estimate the social influence, we introduce a very basic model in social network analysis. That's the independent cascade model. So actually, it is replaceable. So if you want to use a better model, you can 
it's okay if you can com make sure the convergency. So with the partial ranking relationship, now we have the loss function. Here we have h as a um, punish function, and uh, if uh, uh, if there's a punishment, that means that we have a, we have a wrong ranking. So this part will be uh, non-negative. So with optimize this function, we could uh, get the optimal omega. That means the, the, the optimal social social influence strength between between pairwise drivers, and with uh, all the Social influence, uh, social strength estimates. We could now further continue our our, <coughs> our prediction task. So that's the two-stage framework. But in the training stage, well, we have the the training um, training data from in the past, and we try to review their latent social connections. And in the test stage, as we already estimate the social social influence, we will try to predict their future behavior. So now let's turn to the experiment part. We actually it is uh, just the the text in the in the test stage where we try to predict uh, the driver's future behaviors, and we conduct our experiments on the New York City de taxi data during the year 2013. And actually, it's a public public dataset which is published by the government administrator. So, so if you are interested in this data, you can download it from the official official website. So here's uh, some basic statistics of the dataset. And here's some, some uh, driving pattern that we summarized from all the record. And interestingly, we can find that there are already some, uh, there are some, 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 some patterns that are already introduced in the, in the motivating example that I mentioned above. For example, here the, I'm not sure, I'm not sure if you can see it. Here's uh, the blue one that means that uh, a lot of guys travel from the World Transcend Railway Station to the World Street during the morning peak. So that's very interesting. So also we have uh, some metric and, ben and benchmarks. Uh, as we hear, we try to uh, predict the future uh, future behavior chain, and we actually have two tasks. First, we ha we want to know that whether a, a certain pattern will increase or decrease in the next part, and the second, we want to know how much the increase, uh, how much the change in among all the all the patterns. So here we have two sets of metrics. First is precision recall for the binary classification, and second is uh, NDCG for the ranking performance. And also we have some benchmarks uh, that all follows uh, about uh, a time series analysis, also uh, some about the heuristic, heuristic algorithm based on the popularity of patterns. And we can see that, generally speaking, our framework performed much better than baselines. Uh, even we have Actually, we have uh, no extra information, but we just introduced some social learning schemes um, to this to this task, and we can see that sometimes sometimes we could even perform 20 times better than the baselines. So let's also teach us one thing that usually in the past, as I said, that we always try to teach people to do something, but actually sometimes that we just need to follow how people behave during this time, and then we could get a better explanation. So here we also find some interesting rules. For example, we find that uh, actually the, the top drivers usually try uh, always keep changing their behaviors. But uh, for, the, for, the, for the most guys, that you really, you really tend to keep their old, part, old patterns. So I think that's maybe the reason why the top drivers could be the top ones. And also, we, we navigate how the, uh, how the, the pa driving patterns spread among all the drivers. So we try to explain why some, some patterns could be popular, but the rest could be unpopular. And we find that for some patterns that could hardly be spread, for example, the pattern with long-term long distance trip, you can see that actually uh, maybe that's the drivers are not willing to learn, for, learn, learn these patterns since that they are actually very, uh, they are not e effective. But for the patterns with the highest income, they could, actually they could spread, but they could spread only in very small groups. So I believe that uh, the, the top drivers may want to keep these this patterns as secret so that so well, there will be not so, so many competitors to, to earn. And finally, to the conclusion. Well, in this paper, we navigate the latent social, social connections between drivers and uh, even, even we cannot confirm that the social connection could 
could explain all the changes of um, driver's behavior, but at least that's with social factors we can now could better uh, explain how, how drivers behave in, in the future. And also we propose a two-stage framework and we transfer the, the prediction task to the partial ranking of social influence. And also in the future we will try to design some social oriented intelligence service for taxis. For example, that in the past we tried to recommend we re recommend the, the plan for the taxi driver just based on some certain certain target. But now that we could uh, recommend some tutors or recommend some patterns that based on the people's choice, that means the most popular ones. Also, uh, right now, un unfortunately, we don't have a ve uh, we don't have explicit social signal. Uh, we don't have the point-to-point -point social interaction record. But in the future, if we could get them, that we could get or uh, could conduct the, the cross validation between the real social interactions and the est our estimated social connections. So to review. Uh, which kind of social interaction code results in the social influence. So that's all. Thanks. Okay. If I understood well, you don't have explicit uh, uh, social interaction. Yeah. Uh, so uh, you do the simulation. So exactly what is the, the signals for which you, that you use uh, for simulating this social interaction? And second, second uh, observation is that uh, in social influence, it's also very important reputation. It's not that you follow, you follow the suggestion of the others. Uh, it, it strongly depends by who is suggesting you something. So you probably in your model should also consider having a sort of measure for reputation of the person that uh, uh, in this relationship between tutor and, and, and the student. I, I beg your pardon, could you re repeat your, your, your question? I can, can follow up. So the, the social interaction, interaction yeah. that you are uh, simulating yeah. doesn't consider also the reputation because the, um, when you interact with a person, yeah. the suggestion that this person gives you strongly depends also by, by the reputation that or the, the trust that you have in this person. It is an important, an important, so I wonder if it might be of interest or not. So maybe you can take that uh, suggestion yeah. offline. Right? Okay. Yeah. So any other questions? If not, let's thank the speaker again. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. <laughs>